Are you supposed to be keeping your shoulder blade still? Are you allowed to let it move? Let's dive into that. Dr. Craig Lindell here from The Prehab Guys. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the shoulder blade. When is it okay to let the shoulder blade move versus should you be keeping it still or holding it in a certain position? So Rosh right now, I don't know what he's doing. He's doing these little T, these little uh, T Rex rows. He's doing a really tiny range of motion. That's because he's not letting his shoulder blade move. Now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that with the row, but if Arash wants to get maximal muscle strength gains, then we need to train the exercise to the full range of motion. So I'm gonna tell Arash, hey, let that shoulder blade move away. Now pull it back. If he's keeping the shoulder blade still the entire time, he's just working those stabilizers a lot harder in a different way versus if we're talking about max muscle strength gains, let that shoulder blade move. Anything that is open chain where your arm is moving, it's not connected to anything like a push-up, you want to let that shoulder blade move. So that's with a rowing exercise. Now let's talk about what about shoulder press? What about pushing? So Arash, with those same dumbbells, let's have you face that way. And let's do a shoulder press. So now with the shoulder press, because Arash has his shirt off, we can really get a good idea of how much and if at all his shoulder blades are moving. With this double uh, overhead press right now, he's keeping his shoulder blades relatively still. Because his shoulder blades are staying still, that means that his deltoids are doing a lot of work, which is good. That is what the design of the overhead shoulder press is. Now, Rosh, what if you were to really reach? There you go, good. So now that he's letting his shoulder blades move, elevation is happening, upward rotation is happening. So now his serratus anterior is working, his traps are working. The, the upper traps are going to help with shrugging. There's nothing wrong with strengthening the traps in that way, but it's just a matter of what is your intention? What is the context? All right, awesome. Thank you for showing us that, Arash. Now let's go to a landmine press. I would say this definitely can change uh, depending on the context, whether you're doing one arm or two arm. So Arash, if you're doing a landmine press right now, let's take a look at his shoulder blades. So come on down and then just keep doing reps. You see how he's really letting him move? He's getting a lot of upward rotation. He's getting shoulder blade elevation. This is just because of the angle of the exercise. Because it's like on an incline, we want that shoulder blade to move. Do it without your shoulder blade moving. It's gonna look weird. It's, it's not gonna look right. He's not going through the full range of motion. So that's why as physical therapists, we always go to landmine press because this tends to feel better when someone has shoulder pain, especially with bench pressing or overhead pressing, because we're letting that shoulder blade move, we're getting that upward rotation and elevation, which can help with impingement-like symptoms. All right, so those are two differences with pressing as well as with pulling. Let's talk about two other exercises. So now we hit a lot of the sagittal plane. Now we're gonna talk about rotation. So Arash, let's have you face this way. So many people do external rotation wrong and we're gonna get into why. So get sloppy with it, Arash. Just let things move around. Let your shoulder blade move. So the rotator cuff, it attaches to the scapula, to the shoulder blade and connects to the humerus. If Arash is doing external rotation, the shoulder is moving as well as the shoulder blade is moving, then the rotator cuff is not lengthening or shortening, it's not working. What we wanna do with external rotation is chest up, you wanna keep this shoulder blade up and back actually and not let that move. And now go through internal and external rotation. Now the rotator cuff is lengthening and now it's shortening. Now it's lengthening, now it's shortening. That's how you need to do rotator cuff external rotation exercise. This is when shoulder blade position matters and we're not gonna let it move. Last but not least, lateral deltoid raises. Arash is crushing it. He's getting a little bit of a pump right now. I never tell him what we're filming because it keeps him on his tiptoes. Now, let's do lateral deltoid raises. Arash, pick however you wanna go about doing them. So Arash right now, keeping his shoulder blades relatively still, nothing wrong with that. 
He's actually setting his shoulder blades, which I think all of us can agree that's gonna feel a little bit better, right? Before you go to lift, you just sort of set it because we wanna get our shoulder blades set in the right position. And with him keeping them still, it's totally fine if he's only going to shoulder height, right? But Arash, what if you were to go higher? Go up a little bit higher, nice. I should have picked a lighter weight for him, but we're not gonna, we're gonna make him do this. You see how when he goes higher, he even go up higher, there you go. See how the shoulder blades have to move? That's because of something called gleno, scapulo-glenohumeral rhythm. To get 90 degrees, you can get by with very little shoulder blade movement. However, if you go higher, you need to let the shoulder blade move and it is okay to let the shoulder blade move. You wouldn't wanna keep it down, pinned in back. If you're trying to raise your arms, Otherwise it's gonna look goofy and it may not feel good. So that's when shoulder blade position matters, when to let it move, when not to move. Let us know what you think. Arash, thank you for the good workout. All right, until next time.